In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple user interface. What I mean by that is the stuff you interact with on the screen. So let's say this is your phone. This is what you're going to see on the screen. Or, you know, once we're done with this video, it's going to be a lot more beefed up with cool stuff. Now to do this, you're going to need a activity and or a layout, which is XML file. In the previous video, we did make a blank activity. So you can watch that. I will have it linked below. And so you can click on uh, app, go down to res, and then go down to layout. And then you can double click on your uh, minus called activity main screen. Yours could be called different. In this, to see your UI, you can look at here and see what it's going to look like. Probably, it may not be entirely accurate. In fact, sometimes it is completely wrong. Or you can see the text version in the XML code. Sometimes it's preferable to do this. Sometimes it's preferable to see it like running on a phone. Or even running it on your phone works the best. Or emulator. So before we start working on the text part of this, we're going to try using the design tab. So let's say we want to add a button to our app. We can simply drag and drop a button onto the screen. Or let's say maybe a plain text view which would display text. We can drag that on there too. You can now see they're both here. They're using a relative layout which means they are put on the screen relative to the other ones. So as you can see this, when I'm trying to place it, it tells me where it's going to put it in relation to the other button. In this video we're not only going to work with this, we're also going to work with the text. So we could click this relative layout and hit the delete button and get rid of all that if we wanted to. Or instead of doing that we can go to the text and simply change well first we gotta get rid of these that we added. We can just delete those and once we've done that you can now see in here that they're gone because they, they're basically the same thing and this they're both reflecting each other. But in here we're going to change this to uh, let's do linear layout instead of the relative layout because Instead of how relative does everything relative to each other, linear does it in the exact same way every time. So there's going to be like a row of something, a row of something, a row of something, a row of something every time. Or it could be a column depending on how you set up your linear. But it's never going to be relative like it was in the relative layout. Hence the name. So what we're going to do is start setting up our linear layout using our XML. And and here, after layout height, let's say, we're going to start typing. We're going to do Android. We're going to say uh, Android orientation. And we're going to set that equal to horizontal. And you can see it fills it in for you. I better run through what some of this means. Basically, the layout width means how far is the linear layout going to be on the screen. Well, we've set it to match parent, which means it's going to be all the way across the screen, and the height is going to be all the way up and down the screen, or up to this point, depending on whether or not you have this toolbar here. What else do we have? Uh, padding. There's going to be a little bit of padding around the edges. Basically, that's like margins. If you ever wrote a paper, you know the words don't go to the very end of the page. There's a little margin. Basically, that's what that is. And so, yeah, that's all we need to cover for that. We could probably delete that if we want to. Let's do that now because we don't necessarily need that. And make sure we have this little thing that we might have deleted. That's very important. Whenever you finish a statement like that, notice how there's one at the beginning, one at the end. Kind of like HTML. And when we finish our statement, we have to have a closing bracket. Otherwise, it's going to highlight red and it'll freak out. And, you know, we don't really want that to happen. So, the next thing we're going to do is add a text view or text field. And to do that, instead of dragging some text on here like we could, which it could be easier, but for now, we're just going to try typing it. We're going to do the little caret button and start typing with capital letter capital E, then lowercase d, and just edit text. Oh, and then you can see how it fills in a lot of this for us. 
we're going to set the layout width to wrap content. Basically, it's going to wrap around the content. Also, like if you have written a paper for, um, you can select it. So if you have a picture in your document, the text will kind of wrap around the picture, but not go over through the picture or just not go by the picture at all. It just wraps. So it's got a nice like fit. Also, we have to specify the ID of this object. This is object oriented program, programming, so everything is an object. And this text edit or edit text field, we're going to change the ID to let's say um edit message. That sounds good to me. So we're gonna do at plus ID and slash. Basically this is saying, you know, at the ID at the ID and then it's gonna specify the name. So we're gonna call it edit message. Make sure I did that right. Yep. And one more thing. We're going to add this Android hint right there. We're going to set that equal to at string slash edit message. Oh, I think I spelled something wrong here. Nope. I just forgot the underscore. Basically, what this does is specify, um, well, okay, first of all, an edit text field is going to look something like this is what a edit text thing looks like on a actual device running it. This is my phone. It says edit this, which is what I specified it to say. This is what the hint means. So the little words, you know, saying, you know, like write your birthday here, write your name here, and you can actually type on it. And that's the point of those. Basically, you're inputting text is there would be a button below it usually. Um, so that's the that's what those look like. What this is doing here is specifying the hint, and the hint, as we saw in that previous little snippet of video, was the basically what says inside the box. So you know it could be like input your name, you know that kind of thing. That's what the hint is, and then it's specifying what exactly we mean by the hint, and by that we mean edit message. But we gotta define what edit message is edit message is currently a string and by and we're saying that at the string resource we're going to use edit message but oh no it's in red why would it be in red that's because we don't actually have a edit message string made yet and also because I spelt it wrong <laughs> so if we go to our string resources found in the res folder at values and then strings we can add a new string so let's make a couple spaces and add a new string called, um, well, first we got to start the string first. String name equals, and then now we can add what we want it to be. So we're going to have it as edit text or edit message, just like that. And then we're going to have what it says. This here is just specifying, you know, the basically the variable I guess you could say and this inside these will be what it actually says so we could have this say um, edit me or something and then when we go back to our activity or our um, layout we can see that it is now not red no more and now if we go to the design tab we can also see that it's there and working. One thing to also note about this is whenever we're going to write some words here from a string file, we don't always necessarily have to use the strings, but it's better programming practice to do that and it's easier to edit later on because, you know, we could take out this at string resource and make this print out whatever we want it to and just hard code it as they call it. So, you know, we could add all this in here and we go to the design and we'll see it now says that and we never had to reference the string but if we use the string then at any time we can change the string and it'll change there so let's say we want to use this string in several different places instead of having to type it over and over again we only have to remember this little edit message keyword 
and that'll fill everything else in for us. So if we type this back to edit message, then anytime we were to use this, we wouldn't have to type it. We'd only have to do that little bit. So as you can see in the strings file, it says that edit message is uh, is referenced as edit me. And in the UI, you can see it says edit me. Well, let's say we edit the edit me part and change it to enter a message. You can now see it says enter a message. And if we had more text boxes or buttons or whatever, we could all have them saying enter a message. As long as they have the at string, edit message, or whatever keyword uh, you have here. We now have a edit text field, which will allow the user to enter text. But what do they do with that text? Well, nothing yet until we have a button. Let's say this is like a text messaging app, and we have a enter a message part, but there's no way to send the message. So what we gotta do is add a button, and this time instead of in the text, we're gonna do it the fun way, and just drag and drop a button right next to it. Now you can see with our linear layout, it's always gonna be right next to it, or it's going to wrap, depending on what you specify. It's never going to be relative, you know, right on top of it, you know, unless specified. So with this new button, we gotta change some things here. Um, we're gonna, instead of having new button, we're gonna have, let's say, um, send. And, you know, to be better programmers, we gotta do at string and reference send, in no capitals, in the strings file. So now we're just gonna copy and paste this and change this to send. And we can change this here to be send. So now, when we go back into our layout file, we can see it now says send. That's very, very helpful. Now let's say the user has a longer message they want to enter. What we can do is add um, the layout width and the layout height and change those values. So for the layout width, we're gonna change that to zero DP and then we're also going to add the uh, now don't worry if this gets underlined in red we're going to fix that what we got to do now is add another line and we're going to call that line android layout equals one android layout weight to be exact and so now when we go back here we'll see the bar is much longer and fits so that people can actually type a longer message. Now to make sure we have everything right, we can go back here and check to see that everything is pretty much exactly the same. It should be just like how mine is written. You know, I mean, you might have called this something different or used a different value, but it should be pretty much the same. And just to make sure everything is working right, we're gonna click the run button and try it on my phone. It is now running, and you can see that we can enter a message with that we want. So anything, and then we could click send. Obviously the animation's there, but there's not gonna be any sending that's going on as we never touch the Java file. So there you go. You can see it works. Hopefully it worked for you. If not, you can ask me questions on the comments below or on my website. Thanks for watching. Have a very nice day.